So patching holes, that's one thing that I really didn't see. If you want seat pedestals that were originally put in the deck of a boat and you're trying to plug the hole, how do you do that? Make this thing waterproof to make it last. So what I'm using here is just fiberglass resin that I got from a hardware store and mixing it per instructions. I bought, um, you can buy the fiberglass either mesh or, or cloth and I like the fiberglass cloth, it's super strong. But there's one that has, um, that I have just done. There's one that has been sanded. So just getting a bird's eye view of what I actually did here and how I did it. So this is what it looked like. Um, here's the fiberglass cloth. I saved this one to do a demo for you. But I had to um, unbolt the, um, the pedestal and once I unbolted the pedestal that that's all that was there it's just like that except for it was a straight hole what I did was I cut some scrap plywood a little bit larger a little bit larger than the size of the hole and then I took some screws that wouldn't penetrate through the top of the deck just enough to go through i just use half inch plywood and i put a couple of wood screws through it with torx bit but before i did that i put some wax paper on top of that and then screwed it from the underside and i did that so that resin so that plug wouldn't fall all the way through and so that i could resin it without any problem and once the resin cured i could take that i could take this loose and then as soon as I took it loose, well, when it was set up, it would fall right out because that wax paper acts like a release agent. It's not allowed, gonna allow that, um, the resin to stick. Now the plug, this is a piece of Advantech. Uh, I'm a builder, uh, I put subfloors down on houses. This stuff can take a ton of, of weather and not separate like plywood. So, you could use a 5 8 plywood. This is a three-quarter deck, so I just used three-quarter piece of Advantech. And I went and bought a hole saw. That hole that is cut from the factory for that seat base is a three-inch hole. So a hole saw. I went and got a... Um, a Milwaukee hole saw and I went and I had some scrap pieces of Advantech and I went ahead and made me some plugs so I cut that and then popped the plug right out so that's what um that's how I ended up making the plugs that I'm using to plug this boat and that's what you got that's what you end up with right there so it's pretty much ready to go, drop it in there. And what I did is center it. So it was cut with a three inch hole saw and I used a three inch hole saw. So it's taken out the width of the blade, which is a good thing. I wanted resin to take and run all the way around that. So I'm gonna center that up and that, it's about an eighth of an inch around it. Let that resin run that eighth of an inch to center that plug up in it. And then when I get that filled really good and get that resin all down in there, I'm going to lay this, I'm going to coat this in about the distance that I've got my, my mat. I'm going to just roll out the resin on here or actually paint it out and brush it out. And then I'm going to work that cloth down nice and flat and pour a little bit more resin in here and just completely saturate this cloth. Once that's done, this you won't have to worry about it. Right here, that's not going anywhere. You could take a hammer and you can beat on that. Um, this whole boat deck may rot away, but one thing that'll be left are these plugs, these Vantech plugs. Um, I'll show you what it looks like when you, when you take the plywood off the bottom, go up underneath the boat here. And then you can see where the resin has kind of run around just a little bit. Um, so that's where the seats were, the holes were bolted through. That's where the holes were bolted through. So um, it, I poured it in, in all the holes where, the, where it was bolted. 
and then also the big hole where the actual seat base came down through the deck. And again, this is going to be a striper fishing boat, stri striper and crappie. So I, I've ordered uh, a couple of seats for the boat, uh, but I didn't want any kind of bases or anything in there. I want a smooth deck so that I can move around. I can fish on top of the deck. If I, um, I'm still going to keep the live well that was in this corner. You can see where I took some resin, mixed it up, and then I just sealed that up really good. Uh, same thing right here where the, um, this is where the water comes in and this is where the drain plug is in the, in the aerator. So I'm going through and holes that are going to stay in there like that, working that in with the brush really good. And then I'm going to mop this whole deck before I put the carpet on it. But the carpet is in, the, um, the seats are on the way. It's just going to be waiting on me at this point. So... I'm going to go ahead. I've already got some resin dumped in right here, and I'm going to add the hardener to it. And again, just, just put it into um, to spec. What I did was um, quartered up the can. You get two of these tubes of hardener per gallon of resin, but just mix it according and you'll be fine. You got eight to 12 working minutes, so you got to work kind of quick when you get it mixed correctly. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and set this up, mix it in, and then show you how I actually plug that hole right there, how to work the resin. Okay, so I went ahead and put the hardener in it. Then I got a clean brush, and I just bought a cheap brush. They're only about 99 cents. Don't spend a lot of money on one. It's not worth trying to clean it. Once you get this resin in here, you got the hardener in it. Once it sets up, it is set up. So you're not even gonna have time to take and think about cleaning that brush out. I've got two mixing containers. It's got the ounce graduations on it, and that's what I'm going by here. I'm gonna mix it good in one, and then I'm gonna dump it into a clean one. That way I don't have any resin without hardener. And that seems like it's been working really well for me. Okay. We are ready to glass. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, and again, I am videoing this while I am trying to um, trying to show you guys what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna take and pour this resin and let it go down all down in, in there. Just let it pour and let it run. Get some in those screw holes as well. You don't have a whole lot of time, so you need to kind of work quick. I'll put that in there real good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush and I'm just going to take and paint over, run this resin over, um, make sure I'm covering as big as the cloth is. It helps it to, um, makes the process a little bit faster. See that resin, the air bubbles come out of it. Just keep on filling it, and then it'll eventually fill up. Keep working that resin in those bolt holes. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this right here just a minute.
going to lay this cloth and just center it up. Now, you're going to start to see the resin working through the cloth. Just take and work it from the inside out. Start saturating that, that fiberglass cloth. And you need to be well ventilated. This stuff is strong. It's got quite an odor to it. I was doing this in the garage, even with the doors up. It works a little bit better out here. It's not as not as bad. So I'm just working all the working the resin through through the cloth, getting that cloth seated down in there really good. And this is a lot easier when you're not trying to film it. Just take you. I mixed up enough when I did the other ones when I wasn't trying to film this for you guys. I mixed up enough to do two. And didn't have a bit of problem with it. Um, of course, all I'm concentrating on is getting this worked out. You can take the bristles and you can dab it. And that'll bring that resin to the top. It'll push it through that cloth. So if you have puddles of resin in there, just tap on it just a little bit and it'll bring it right up and then it'll brush and it'll smooth right out. But you wanna do a pretty good job of smoothing this. That way you don't have a hump in your carpet. If I was gonna leave a hump in it, I would have just left. A, if I was gonna leave a hump in it, I would have just left the um, the metal pieces in there. But I don't want a hump in it. I want it nice and smooth. And it was getting a little bit soft. A lot of water getting around where it was cut, and I didn't want it to do that anymore. So no more water. I don't have to worry about it. It'd be good to go. Now this is still, I'm still working with it right here. It's still okay, but it won't be much longer that um, I'll go ahead and put a little bit, brush a little bit beyond it. But put a little bit of resin over that and just work it in, let it flow. Make sure I get that cloth good. And I'm, I've still got a little bit of resin left. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this video off because I can't do this with, um, I can't film brushing the edges, but this is the hard part, or I'd say the the part that I haven't seen any uh, anybody do this to a boat. But of course, but of course I haven't, uh, I've watched a lot of pontoon restorations on there and there's some good ones, but I thought you guys might, if you have a hole in the boat, and you want to know how to fix the hole in the boat, cut you a plug, put you a base on the bottom of it, and then you'll be good to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm put a little bit of resin right where them holes are.
And that's it. It'll look like that when it dries. And it won't take long. About two hours, you can go ahead and sand it. So, um, like and subscribe. Hope you like it. Hope you learned something. Hope this will help you with your project. Thanks.